Welcome to this week's edition of the real of the real Rob Report here with a I say it all the time, but another good friend of mine, Roddy White, Atlanta Falcons. They should have lost the Seattle Seahawks, but they didn't. That ain't true. That How you doing this this off season? Man? We're not gonna talk about the game. I'm doing good. We ain't got to talk about the game, but we never should have lost to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was lucky to get back in the game with us. Lucky? Yeah, lucky. I mean, we scored points. Our qu our quarterback balled out, and we got back in the game. We're so fortunate about that. Y'all fortunate to get those three plays to get a field goal. No, 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 no. We've been in that situation too many times. You know, we understand the moment. You know, y'all got a little bit too hype over there. You know, we seen y'all sideline running up and down. It's over, it's over. No, no, no. We still had two time up. What do you, uh, talking about the Atlanta Falcons, what do you think you guys need to do to get to that next level, to beat a team like San Francisco, to get to that Super Bowl? I just think we just got to continue to get better, man. You know, I think this team has improved every year, you know, and um, as long as we continue to do that, man, everybody continue to be hungry, you know, hungry and humble, man. Get out there and do those things, and we'll be A-OK, -okay, man. We'll go out there, we'll, we'll win us one. All right, you know, I got to go there. Best cornerback in the league. Well, right now he hurt. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, he'll be back, though. I've seen some footage of him running around here for Fisher Sports, so, you know, He's uh he's the best guy until you know till uh, he comes back and, and he can't prove it. So you know you know Darrell right now is is the best corner in the league. You, you ain't gonna give my boy no love. You know, I can't give him no love. Why not? I mean he he, he, he the, the the numbers do speak for themselves. I, I mean you can't say this man ain't had a good ain't have a good past two years. Uh, I, I mean I didn't. I mean we went down to Seattle two years ago and he wasn't even on the field when we was out there. So it's kind of hard for me to just put him throw him in the best cornerback you know situation you, you know, seen him on film though you see him but you see that's the thing though I watch him on film and he don't jump off it's, it's nothing that jumps off about him you know that I'd be like oh I'm gonna lose sleep you know getting ready for this guy you know so that's my thing that's my take on him he's a he's a good player you know what I'm saying but he's not somebody that I wake up and be like I gotta run some extra routes so I gotta do some extra things that you know to get ready to play against him you know okay talking about that I know you consider yourself one of the best receivers in this league. Who who would you consider to be in your company? I'm not gonna just say go out there and say the best receiver. You know what I mean? Because I think everybody has have different styles. But who would be in that in that company of that elite top receiver? Uh, it's a lot of guys out there right now that are really really good. You know, um, this has been a year. You know, um, back in the day, it was kind of like it was like a, a, a tree back in the day where it was just Rice, Chris Carter, and you know, then Moss and To. But nowadays, it's such a throw-oriented league, and everybody's going out there throwing the football all over the place. It's so many good guys. You know, you Andre Johnson, Brandon Marshall, Calvin Johnson, Fitz, you know, Julio, A.J. Green, Dez Bryant. I mean, you could just keep going, keep going. The guys throwing up 13, 14, 15, 2,000 yards out there. So it's so many good guys out there right now. It's, it's kind of hard to narrow the gap and say, you know, who's the best receivers in the game because we all bring such a, a, a difference to the game. And, and don't let me forget Demarius Thomas. He, he's a beast too. Now you, you talk about this being a passing league with the evolution of offenses going to the spread and and doing the read option and things like that. Will there ever be a team that throws a whole lot more win the Super Bowl? Because it just seems like the Super Bowl winner always has some type of a run game. Uh, I think I think you throw to, to get to the championship and you run to win it. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's where all uh, teams that get in trouble, you know, when they get to the Super Bowl because defenses, are, they always find ways to stop passing routes and, 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 and change stuff up and mix up coverages to kind of dictate, you know, what you're doing on offense. And you got to run the ball. And then if you go out there and put 30 points on, you got to stop the other team from scoring. So you got to have a neutralizer. So the teams that can run the ball and run the ball well usually win the championships because, you know, at the end of that, that fourth quarter when it's grind time, you got to go out there and grind guys out and that's how you get it done uh, we were talking about the draft earlier you and myself and um, you talked about the way they put picks together to get Julio and, and he's been tremendous to you guys he's been tremendous to the league great player uh, you guys have had a reputation of being very explosive on offense being very vanilla on special teams and just um, bend but don't break on defense do you think that this is the year that you may need to go out there on a limb and get a dominant defensive guy in the draft yeah, I think so. You know, I just think we need to, uh, 
you know, go out there and go fishing. Yeah. You know, we got to go fishing and, and get us get us one of them them them, them Bassmaster Championship <laughs> fish. You know what I'm saying? But well, we can go out there and uh, you know, dominate that a guy that can come on our defensive end and, and just dominate. You know, a pass rusher, defensive interior guy. You know, I think our secondary is good and our linebacking core is, you know, is, is pretty good. You know, as it is. So I just think if we can get that dominate guy on the line that can go out there and, and give us some pass rush and get us some sacks, then we'll be fine. How do you let John Abraham go though? That's you can't buy ten sacks. You can't draft ten sacks. How does that happen? <sighs> man, <laughs> that's management. I don't. I, I, I'm on a lower level. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, the building got two floors, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I ain't up there. I don't I don't even go up there, you know what I'm saying? I only go up there to talk to Coach Smith. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm on the lower level. I just like staying in the locker room yeah. and stuff like that. But um, you know, it's tough, man, especially losing a guy like that, man, who's been such a such a good leader in the locker room and he comes in, he does his job year in, year out, you give you ten sacks, you know, it's tough to replace that. And then, you know, just going out there and see how hard he works and, you know, he wants to win a Super Bowl and for him not to be on our team, you know, us be right there at that verge, that crack right there, you know, to get to that ceiling. You know, it's tough sled, man. So I mean I hope we can get him back. You know, he hasn't signed yet. So um if we can find a way to just get him to ink a contract, I'll be all right, man. I know that's right, man. NFC South, we spoke earlier about Sean Payton coming back, New Orleans Saints, all those things. Again, with the with the recent, you know, I ain't going to say trouble they've been in, but the recent struggles they've had, you know, defense being down, you know, bounty gate, all those type of things. You've played in this conference your whole career. Will Sean Payton make that big of a difference for the New Orleans Saints? I mean, with the chemistry in the locker room, you know, probably talking to the players, yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, uh, they might win, you know, two or three more games with him, you know, at the helm. But, you know, I just I just don't see that, that, that team just going to be in 13, 14 wins, you know, just because one guy comes back, he's going to make that big of a difference. I mean, he is a, you know, an integral part of their, their, their whole block, you know, their whole thing that they got going. And those guys rally behind him and they get after it. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to ease a lot of the storm because, you know, he comes back, he's going to be the play caller. He's going to go out there and do his thing and, you know, get breezed and then ready to play. Great stuff. You know what I'm saying? Great stuff, Roddy White. We're going to come right back. We're going to go pay a few bills here real quick. We'll be right back with Roddy White. Got to pay them bills. <laughs> Got to pay them bills. The shot's so carefully done yeah. <laughs> because if anything, you don't drop the camera. I'm not. Dude. Don't drop the camera. <laughs> Please put on some clothes, man. <laughs> We're out in the locker room, man. This is the real locker room. Are you getting your back shaved? Look at how good he did, though. Yeah. <laughs> I need my back shaved, man. I, in Wisconsin, I used to have a teammate that would do it. And I'd do his back because it was so hairy. And now I got no one, so I got to pay hired guns. It's hard. This is hard. All right, you ready? Yes, I'm right, ready. So keep me on pace here. Okay. Because we talked about this earlier. Marshawn sold out. Marshawn did sports science. That show with the nerd guy. He proves how great of athletes are and how they're equivalent to like rockets and stuff like that. Which to me is not even impressive because what's impressive is a guy like me in the NFL. Yeah. How am I in the NFL? That's what I want to know. I have no ability. Give me out. Come on, Ma. Now you're on the spot. Now on you're the on spot. the spot. We're disco dancing and there's certain dances you hear, certain songs you hear if you're in a club that'll get you. This one's fine right here. <laughs> <laughs> you are retarded, dude. And you dropping water on him. Just, just, just tell us, just, what? Just, just two pieces of that made it to the league. Never should have made it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You got me with the shirt off too. This is really, this is really gonna sell now. Oh my god! You know what? I tell you this all the time. I don't even work out. That's I, the crazy I, thing. This you is know natural. what? It's amazing. I know. It's amazing. I, I, I really thought that you like had a cyber personal flex or trainer yeah, something, and a bow yeah. flex. Oh, yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Just pretty much eat. You know, whatever I, whatever I feel like I need to for nourishment, and then I'm good. Ooh, bacon. <laughs> Welcome back. Real Rob Report here, Roddy White TV, Roddy White, Atlanta Falcons. Roddy, we're going to talk about Commissioner Goodell, okay? The man makes $30 million a year. I don't agree with that. I know you, you know, to run this $9 billion enterprise, you have to make a lot of money. But $30 million, is he worth it? 
I guess he's worth every penny, man. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you broke in deals, you know, I, I got, I, I turned my thing. I, I got a lot of respect for that guy. You know, he he broke one of the best deals, you know, I've ever seen, you know, with the players and stuff like that. And, you know, and um, as his situation goes and he continues every year to, to build this thing into a, a dynasty and every year it's nine billion, now this year it's 10 billion, mm -hmm. you know, and and they got a climax they didn't want to reach the way, you know, he gonna be making, you know, this thing will be worth $25 billion. And just imagine he may be making a hundred million dollars a yeah. year. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, oh, I mean, when you uh, when you go out there and you manage this thing how it's supposed to be and you got people buying tickets and sitting in seats and, and um, Doing what you want to do to get things done, man. You got to give him his props, man. I, I'm done talking bad about him, man. <laughs> I can't do it because he's a great negotiator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he comes, he comes to the negotiating table with a plan, and he exceeds his expectations of his plans that he put out there. Well, I know he's trying to make the game safer, yeah. you know. Um, but I, I'm a fullback, man. I like to hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think he's like like prime time say, sissifying the game. What are your thoughts? You're a receiver. You know, the, the defenders have to think now when they hit you coming across the middle. Does it change your mindset coming across the middle? It don't change my mindset because I, I got one job to do, and that's catch the football. You know, and um, it only changed my mindset is that he ain't going to blow me up so I can catch and run. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know that's the thing I take from it. So, you know, um, he's helping it out. It, I mean, people want to see people score points, you know, and um, the game is getting a little erratic because of the defensive guys are going through all these penalties and getting fined and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know if people are going to want to go, go out there and play defense no more. You know, um, you can't go out there and hit people and, and do the things like that that they love to do on the defensive side of the ball. So, you know, you just got to you gotta bear with them, you know what I'm saying? And um, hopefully, you know, the competition committee can change some of this stuff. You know, they're going to evaluate how it is. You know, through years of playing and, and things like that. And if it ain't working, we're going to have to find a way to fix it. Should the competition committee have current players involved in, in the decision-making process as far as rule changes? Because we are playing. You know, and I look at this no-truck rule. That's what I call it, the no-truck rule. You can't truck nobody no more. Um, none of those guys on the uh, committee, and I could be wrong, were running backs. No. How do they even know what it feels like to have 11 guys coming at them with the ball? That's the same guys are picking players every year in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. So, that's true. so I mean, it's just a different dimension to you know those guys are. That's why I said they they sit on that top floor and tell you how the game should be played, but they don't play the game. You know, and um, you know that's my biggest issue, especially with the whole NFL period. You know, and um, especially on our part of the NFL PA, nothing against D. Smith or anything that he does. You know, um, I just feel like we need a player that's actually played the game to negotiate contracts for players. You know, that's the only way I think that we can get the best deal for ourselves. But in saying that, you know, the competition committee must, I, that should have been what the NFLPA kind of pushed on them. It's like, we need players' input on all these things that y'all doing. You just can't sit in the office and say, okay, tell the running back he can't do this no more, or tell the defender he can't do this no more, and then you go up there and show a video of something and you say this is the way you do it, and then this is the way you shouldn't do it. But you ain't out there going full speed. You don't yeah. know how fast the game is. You know what I'm saying? So it's a totally different situation, you know, for them. But they're going to make rules to make the game safer so guys can play a lot longer, and hopefully we can make more money. Uh, oh, talking about making more money, it brings up a point. For real, man, should we, should our PA do more for us in the offseason? Should we be making more money in the offseason? I think so. You know, um, I mean, the NFL is a great living, you know, to start with. We all bless, you know, to make what we make during the season. But, I mean, there should be roads and avenues to where we can um, to where we can make more money off the field because football is an ongoing thing. This thing's never stopped. You know, I just seen a, a video they were screaming on, on, on NFL Network when Peyton Manning was down there at Duke throwing with Demarius Thomas and Wes Welker. And people were watching it. You know what I'm saying? This is like just toss the football around you know and um, this is what we do like on a weekly basis out in the off season so if people are going to watch it and you can get paid to do that you know and um these networks are making money off of it and they're screaming it out there so people can watch it we should be able to get you know a little piece of the pie <laughs> oh, that's right man you've you you know what 10 years for you nine this is going on nine nine nine, nine, nine. when will roddy white tv 
I know you don't want to think about that in your career, but you know, you've been doing it for a long time. You know, uh, you got a guy like Tony Gonzalez who's also, you know, showing guys how to stay in this league a long time. Are you going to just keep doing it till the wheels fall off, or do you have a plan in the back of your mind as to when you want to call it quits? I, I have a plan, man. You know, I told everybody if I ever got to 10 years, it, it would be a blessing. You know, and, um, you know, I'm one year away from that. You know, and um, I just think about, you know, what I'm going to do, I, I said if I make it to 10, you know, if I get to 12, I'm done. You know, I want to go on and venture out in other avenues of my life and try to, you know, do things that I want to do. You know, and, um, you know, I've saved a lot of my money, so, you know, in that aspect, I would be pretty good at where I'm at in my, my stage in life. But, you know, I just want to, football takes up so much of your time, so much of your energy. You know, I want to do other things like family things and, and, and get together with my people and, and, and take vacations and stuff like that. And that's the important part. But I also want to win a Super Bowl. So it's it's tough when you when you when you haven't won one and you like it year nine and it's coming up and you like, oh man, I need to win this thing. I need to win this thing. It makes so much more decisions in your life a whole lot easier. You know what you want to do and what ventures you want to go off into. Well, you know, you play in the NFC, and uh, the role is going to have to come through the NFC West. I'm sorry I had to say that, but I ain't going to let you respond on that one, that the road to the Super Bowl has got to go through the NFC West. But why, anyway. Why would you say that when the road didn't have to go through there last year and went through the Georgia Dome? But y'all lost. We did lose. So the road but to the Super Bowl went through the NFC West. Not really. You have to have a home playoff game. Oh, that's what that means. That's what, when the when road, road goes, goes through. through. Yes, yes. It's got It'll be back in the Georgia Dome. It's you think so? You think so? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we got a segment on the Real Rob Report. You know, we call it FaceTime. You know, you basically look into the camera. You know, you talk to your fans, whether it's fans of Roddy White TV, whether it's fans of Roddy White, you know, uh, foundation, you know, whatever you want to talk about. If you want to talk to somebody who cut you off this morning, you know <laughs> what I mean, just cuss him out. You can do that on The Real Rob Report. It's called The Real Rob Report. So I'm going to give you the mic. You look right into that camera right there and do your thing, man. I just want to give a shout out to all uh, the Roddy White TV followers. Thank y'all for even following me, man. You know, it's been a tremendous pleasure, you know, to just entertain you guys and just keeping y'all going on. I just want to thank all the fans out there for Atlanta, you know, for coming out to the games and everything. We're going to keep y'all into it. We're going to keep y'all going, you know. We're going to hopefully, gratefully, go get us a big thing, go get us one of those rings, man, you know. and um. You know, I don't have rural rage. I don't do all that stuff. You know, I'm just chilling, man. I just love I just love living life, man. That's what I love to do. So, you know, y'all love live life and laugh. You know, and um, we'll have a good time. All right. I'm out. Road to the Super Bowl, Seattle Seahawks. You know what I'm saying? They ain't going to go through the Georgia Dome. He talking all that. They about to go get a clash ring. You feel what I'm saying? There ain't going to be no Super Bowl ring. We out of here. Real Rob Report. Peace. <laughs>